Restless leg syndrome, sometimes known as willis eckbaum disease, is a common neurological condition characterised by an intense, irresistible urge to move the legs. On the surface, this may sound quite harmless. However, it can cause significant distress to patients and negatively affect multiple aspects of their lives. The condition features unusual, unpleasant sensations described as crawling, itching and stretching of the deeper structures of the leg, referred to as dysesthesia. But importantly, it does not typically feature pain or sensitivity to touch. The sensations are usually worse in the evening and are often worst overnight, typically when at rest. Interestingly, these feelings are subsided by walking or moving, therefore patients feel a compulsion to move the legs, giving the name restless leg syndrome. In 80% of cases, there are periodic leg movements during sleep, which may be twitching or periodic dorsiflexion of the foot. This can last up to 5 seconds, occurring approximately every 20 to 40 seconds. Although the name states legs, it can also affect the arms. Depending on severity, this can mean a reduced quality of life, including poor sleep, leading to daytime somnolence, which can affect concentration, as well as performance in work or school. Restless leg syndrome is divided into primary and secondary, where primary is mostly idiopathic, meaning there is no apparent cause. It is thought to be familial in many cases and tends to be inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern. These patients are more likely to be affected earlier in life, even as early as childhood. It can demonstrate genetic anticipation, which is where the age of onset gets younger through each generation. Secondary restless leg syndrome is the result of another underlying process. Examples could be pregnancy, iron deficiency, and end stage renal disease, with 25 to 50% of patients on hemodialysis experiencing it. It can even be due to some medications, in particular those which antagonize or decrease dopamine, including antidepressants, antiemetics like metoclopramide, antipsychotics, and even antihistamines. Use of nicotine, caffeine and alcohol can also cause it. Although the exact mechanism is not clear, there are correlations that link both dopamine and iron. Dopamine is thought to correlate with the circadian rhythm. Therefore, low levels of dopamine towards the end of the day could explain why symptoms worsen at night. The role of dopamine is also suggested by the medications we listed having dopamine blocking properties. Some research suggests an abnormality in the dopaminergic pathways within the basal ganglia, which is also the location of disruption in Parkinson's disease. In fact, patients with Parkinson's disease are more likely to develop restless leg syndrome. Additionally, the role of low iron may also be why patients on hemodialysis are particularly affected, because chronic kidney disease can predispose to reduced iron availability through both iron deficiency and anemia of chronic disease. Iron deficiency is also more likely when pregnant. Overall, it's actually a fairly common condition, with between 5 and 15% of the general population being affected. It is more common in females than in males, by around 2 to 1, and is even more common in pregnancy. Although the prevalence is higher as people get older, the mean onset is typically around 30, but any age can be affected. We mentioned nicotine, alcohol and caffeine use, but obesity and diabetes have also been linked with an increased risk. The diagnosis is primarily a clinical diagnosis, which means it is made mostly on the history and physical exam. All five of these criteria must be met, including the urge to move the legs and symptoms of dysesthesia, that are worse in the evening or at night, 
and also worse at rest. These should also be relieved by movement or stretching, and they should not be the result of other conditions. The presence of iron deficiency, pregnancy, or uremia may point towards a secondary restless leg syndrome. This will likely improve once these factors are corrected, therefore blood tests including ferritin are routinely done. Medications should also be reviewed as they may well be the cause. The treatment aims at reducing symptoms in primary restless leg syndrome and potentially a cure in secondary types. The severity of symptoms can range from occasional mild symptoms to daily troublesome symptoms. Unless they are daily and disturbing sleep, non-pharmacological means are tried first, such as lifestyle modification including reducing nicotine, alcohol and caffeine, particularly at night, and introduction of massages or warm baths before bed. More recently, devices have been developed that apply pressure and vibrations to the legs that can help reduce the symptoms. First line medication is usually a longer release gabapentin, such as gabapentin and carbil, and in some cases using levodopa and carbidopa, which are a combination of a dopamine precursor and decarboxylase inhibitor used to inhibit the breakdown of levodopa. Dopamine agonists like pramipexol or apinorol are other options. Benzodiazepines or low potency opioids might also be considered. Of course, underlying causes should be treated and investigated. For example, if iron deficiency is found, then this should also trigger a workup to find the cause as well as provide iron supplementation.